bending forward, bending back, baby. to my channel so if you haven't already read the title we are getting educated today and I talk about this a lot right because we are not only here on this channel to get fondled okay inappropriately with a little bit of issues um, but also to be educated and I want to you guys to be able to take away some stuff so that we can all be knowledgeable fitness gellies now hear me out right so we are talking about the difference between core and abs because yes they are not the same thing those words are not interchangeable they are mutually exclusive well they're not mutually exclusive but for the sake of this video we're gonna consider them mutually exclusive so we're gonna break this down into a little bit of a, a little a little a little girl talk okay and a boy talk and uh also whatever you identify talk okay because we are all inclusive in this channel so your core is like a group of more than 20 muscles in your stomach your back and your hips babe okay and then your abs are just a small fraction of that so the core muscles they work together to keep your spine stabilized erect per se and they are critical when it comes to bending forward bending backwards going side going to the other side <laughs> I don't know whereas your abs the sole function are your abs are to help you kind of bend forward and stuff whereas your you know your core it's a little bit more dynamic okay which is why I'm a slut for core okay I don't have anything against abs but I'm a whore absolute feral a slut for core in every day let me simplify this a little bit more for you little stinkers okay you little apple bottom boot cut jeans hookers Jay had them apple bottom jeans boots with the fur I want you to think about core as a compound lift and I want you to think about abs as an isolation lift, right? Let's bring a little bit of legs in here. So a squat is considered a compound movement and the reason it is considered a compound movement is because it uses more than one muscle group. Okay, great, love that, mm. Okay, but a leg extension, you're just moving your legs like that. That is an isolation movement primarily focused around your quads. So compound using more than one isolation focused on one muscle group. Both work the legs, right? Both work the legs, but one's a little bit more, uh, you know, in. Yeah, you get what I'm trying to say. So I want you to think about your core is that compound movement where it's working more than one muscle group, and your abs are that isolation movement where it's really only focused on, you know, so now that we kind of understand a little bit of, you know, the difference between core and abs, which one should you do, okay? And I'm extremely judgmental. I'm very picky. If I had to choose, I'm gonna pick core over abs any fucking day, uh, any day, <laughs> okay? And I just said previously, I'm a slut. You know, You're a little slut. You know, a whore maybe for core. And this is just my personal opinion on it. If you only had to choose one, choose core, okay? Because abs are cool and all, right? Abs are amazing. We love a good dynamic movement, but core is going to be the one that is, it's just gonna be on top, you know? Put your foot up there. 12 seconds later. Also, I know you guys see my, uh, my new bling. Okay, guys, I'm a smartwatch girly, and that leads me into today's sponsor. Let's give a huge shout out to Best Buy for uh, giving me a big fat kiss on the mouth when they reached out. Sorry, you guys make me a little nervous. But yeah, so they are sponsoring today's video and they let me try out the Garmin Venue 3. Of course, like any other smartwatch, you can get your calls, your messages. It tells me, you know, lets me know the weather for the day, which is nice. I really don't use it for that. Um, I primarily use it to focus on my health because that is obviously what this entire channel is about. Don't be silly, you little slinky booty. But I have recently become freaking sedentary, man. Like, working from home, like I'm sitting in my house. Okay, I'm not moving from my from my table all day. And I, what I like about it is that it has like little reminders. That's like, it's like, hey, you've been sitting down too long. Like, it's time to get up. It's like, buzz, buzz, it's time to step. And I like that because then I'm like, okay, well, I obviously need to take a little break. Let me go on a hawk or a walk. Uh, one of the other things that I really, really like about it, which this is like probably my, my, my main thing, is that it tells me how many calories I burn throughout the day as well as when I'm sleeping. And so why is that such a great, amazing thing? Well, here, let me tell you why. If you know exactly how many calories you're burning throughout the day you literally one don't have to guess how many calories you should be consuming because you know and two you'll be able to play around with it a little bit so if let's say like my maintenance calories like typically is 2300 calories so that means that if I'm trying to remain the same I eat at 2300 calories if I'm trying to lose fat or weight I eat below 2300 calories if I'm trying to gain weight or gain muscle I eat above 2300 calories and obviously proper training that's why I really really like that I feel like with calories especially 
especially if you don't have tools like this, you really are doing a guessing game and having to listen more to your body. But if you have this, that kind of cuts out the middleman, babe. One of the other few features that I really like about it is your sleep score, the body battery, and the stress level. I've been extremely stressed. I don't know how it tracks my stress, but it does, and it lets me know that, and it reminds me, it's like, hey, you know, maybe it's time to have a restful moment. You're really stressed out right now. Love that. And two, when it comes to my sleep score, it will literally show you your REM, when you're lightly awake, when you're in deep sleep, when you're, you know, all this other stuff, and it shows you that throughout the night. I freaking love that, because I didn't realize how many times I was, like, not sleep. Like, I, I felt it, but, like, when you're really seeing it, you're like, okay, well, what do I need to change differently to kind of get there? And if you're not paying attention to the other videos I posted, sleep is extremely important. Having poor sleep is like the number one way to decrease your muscle gain and also retain a lot of that fat that we're trying to get rid of. So if you guys are interested, I'm going to go ahead and link this watch in my description down below. If you have any questions, just ask me in the comments. I do get a bit intimate with y'all. Don't make it weird. And then I also, I want to give another huge thank you again to Best Buy for sponsoring and supporting this channel. My hips. Oh God, that hurt. The reason why I would personally prefer we focus more on core than ab exercises, right? Because I think the misconception is that if you do a whole bunch of ab exercises, you're gonna see a six pack. When in reality, that's just not true. There are a lot of things that play into someone's ability to see their six pack, right? And it's it's more than just doing the exercises. They're really built in the kitchen, okay? So if you're not seeing yours, it's probably just because you have a certain amount of fat on top of them and they're not able to be pierced through. But everybody has abs man everybody okay and I'm you know I'm gonna tell you something right my dad my dad's a personal trainer okay he's been a personal trainer for 20 plus years and when I was a child when I was a skinny little twig my dad used to be like show me off to his clients be like lift your shirt up not in a weird way not in a weird way okay that came out weird but you know what I meant he'd be like lift your shirt up and I'd show them my super skinny abs because everybody has abs I have great genetics for abs so when I was a child I was jacked up okay I looked like I was doing bodybuilding competitions as a four-year-old. Right. Biceps like a champion bodybuilder, washboard abs, and move like a contortionist. <laughs> Right? And my dad would be like, oh, you see her? She's got abs. You guys can do it. But like in reality, like that's just like not true, right? Because the reason why I had abs is because I had a very low body fat percentage as a child and good ab genetics, not because I was sitting there doing a million crunches die. So I want you to keep that in mind. If you're trying to see abs, you've never seen them before, you probably just aren't at a low enough body fat percentage. I find core to be a domino effect. If you were to strengthen your core, make it super, super strong, dense, an absolute unit, it is going to make your lift stronger and we want that, okay? Because oftentimes, the reason why people can't lift as heavy as they might like is because their form is breaking. Sometimes their back is, is a little arched too much, you know, when they're doing this, or maybe their back is a little too round, or maybe they're, you know, they're feeling all this random pain and stuff like that. One of the reasons for that is because they just have a really fucking weak core. Now, I want you to think about it like this. If your core is stronger, you'll be able to lift more weight, okay? Now, if you're able to lift more weight when you're working out, that means you're going to be able to tear more muscle fiber. And the tearing of muscle fibers, that process, that rebuilding process is how we build muscle. So if you have more muscle on your body, okay, what's that mean? What's that mean, guys? Don't get rid, don't get rid. It means that you're technically gonna be able to burn more calories throughout the day without exercising. And that is because muscle requires a lot of energy to maintain. And so your body is working really, really hard to maintain the muscle that you have built, meaning you are burning more calories. You see why I prefer core? Now, if I'm burning more calories, that means I don't have to eat as little to see the same results because my body is already doing a good majority of the work for me. I don't have to be in the gym for an hour and doing 60 minutes of cardio because I'm putting on muscle, babe. A majority of the shit in fitness is a domino effect. And as soon as you start, you know, shifting, shifting your perception into that, like you're gonna make your life a lot easier. Trust me. When I started transitioning from doing a whole bunch of ab exercises, exercises, all right, to actually doing core exercises, that is when I saw the most strength gains, and that is one of the reasons why I saw a shit ton of results. Baby, my balance is crazy. Great, ah, oh, fuck. Damn. I almost pulled my quad. Yeah, anyway, my balance is crazy. My stability, she's a whore. She can balance multiple different things, and I want you to go ahead and um, use your imagination for what I'm talking about. 
right, now the question is, how do you train your core, right? Like everyone knows how to train abs. Chop on the floor and give me a couple crunches. Core is not the same. It is a stabilizer muscle, which I've said over and over again. So if you haven't gotten that in your goddamn noggin, I want you to open okay. your ears. How we train it is by destabilizing the environment. In a little bit, we are gonna head over to the gym. I'm gonna give you two workouts. One workout is going to be a core workout, which I love, ooh, ah, ooh. And the other exercise is going to be an ab circuit for you guys. So you're welcome. I know I'm a gracious person. A few inches later. I'm not the same. I'm reading a new chapter, babe. Been stuck here in a bed for 